I'm King Gettlestone. This is my story. <laughs> I started to take cycling seriously in 2012 when I was a 15 year old and won my first national title at the under 14 South African national champs. I emigrated to New Zealand where I was strong but got my ass handed to me on many occasions by the Kiwis. I then noted this as a barrier I needed to overcome and started to up the ante on training. I was then introduced to Australian youngsters after I had become pretty strong for New Zealand standards but once again I got a lesson taught to me but this time by the Aussies. I took the disappointment as a learning curve and again adjusted my training to the new level I knew was required of me. Things started to take off for me back in 2014 when I became the youngest ever winner of the famous Le Race, an open event and a pretty honourable race here in New Zealand. An elite rider, Sam Horgan, raced over in Australia's National Road Series. He got me a guest ride in the following week in the Tour of Adelaide. My first ever time in Australia and my first time racing against semi-professionals and professional teams at the time known as Drapak. I somehow and to this day don't know how I managed it. Got in a break that had all key GC riders in and rode myself into third overall and into the young riders jersey. I was approached by many teams but one team sparked my interest in the most and that was Charter Mason Giant Racing. They developed me well on and off the bike and I found myself growing up fast. Living abroad away from home, learning how to cook and clean and essentially fend for myself at a young age was a good thing. In 2015 I won what I would say to this day to be my biggest victory yet. Battle on the border stage one with a hilltop finish against the likes of Patrick Bevan, Chris Hamilton and Ben O'Connor who all ride in the world tour today. Following this success I went to Europe for the very first time where I lived and raced in France for a junior team, UCI Nantes Atlantique. I became known straight away as I started my first ever UCI race, the Tour de Valmarie, also known as the Junior Tour de France. Four days after arriving, I started the Tour. I won the first stage and went on to win the Tour overall. I won another race in France. I won a lot of races in France. Following my stream of success, I was selected to represent South Africa at the World Championships, where I finished fourth in the time trial. In 2016, I signed with Dimension Data's professional team, but when Mark Cavendish joined the team, the team gained a World Tour license. This complicated things as the team felt it would be too much of a large jump for a first year under 23, so I joined the Dimension Data Continental team instead. I had a shocking year, crashing my first race in Italy at Coppa Bartali, breaking my wrist, being stuck training indoors for two months, and then when finally I make a return to racing, disaster struck on the 5th of June in the Coppa della Pace when I collided through the back window of my team car, severing my carotid artery, jugular vein and my brachial plexus. A bunch of nerves in the shoulder that left me with a paralyzed arm, bicep, shoulder and vocal cord. I woke up from a coma three days later not knowing what's going on or where I am. I saw my parents at my bedside along with my rider agent and all around South African cycling legend Robert Hunter accompanied by doctors telling me what to do in Italian. I did not speak Italian, nor could I really understand much of what was going on, but Robbie was fluent in Italian and translated for me. Things moved on to a rehab center where I relearned how to walk and did up to six hours of rehab a day. Yeah, I know, crazy. I had to work hard because I had one aspiration lying in bed all day in a foreign country, and that was to get home. Now I'm taking the same determination, my new love and appreciation for life, to work my butt off, to keep chasing my dreams, and show the world that anything is possible, no matter how big the obstacle is, if you put your mind to it and believe in yourself, no matter what anyone else tells you. This takes us to the present day, the 24th of April, 2017, where I embark on an epic journey with a few mates, proving to myself, everyone else who believes in me, and of course those that doubt me. Only 10 months and 19 days after my accident, I will be training 30 hours in seven days. Sorry, not the most appealing looking person, but... Not a bad start. I'll probably be losing a bit more than that after this few days, but I think it's time for breakfast. 
never listen to the weather reports because they're almost never right. And this is just disappointing for a five hour day to start off the week. It's foggy and wet. And I promise I'll be way more enthusiastic when I start to wake up a bit more. It's a bit early in the morning and I'm about to have breakfast but I obviously didn't get enough sleep last night so I'm not feeling as awake as I should be. And because it's such a big day I'm going to have more than just cereal. I'm going to cook myself an omelette because you've got to get that long lasting nutrition. And I feel like I've got to give myself the right nutrients. It's a big week, my biggest week ever, 30 hours. I think it's going to be uh, taking a lot of its toll. That's why I'm weighing myself because I've got a feeling I might lose a lot of weight and I don't really have enough, no, a lot of weight to lose. So that'll be interesting. I should probably explain to you why I'm eating so much. When I was in ICU, I lost a lot of weight. Not only because I was in a coma, I obviously couldn't eat then. But when I woke up, I didn't exactly have the strength to chew and to swallow. And I couldn't swallow because my epiglottis the little flappy thing in the back of your throat that closes your airway when you swallow wasn't working. <coughs> because I couldn't actually eat any solid food for about three or so weeks. You saw the guy weighing himself in the mirror, I mean in the bathroom. I was only weighing 66 kilos. Anyway, so I went down to 50 kilos and I'm 188 centimeters tall. So you can see I had practically no muscle on me, very anorexic, not by choice of course. So obviously I love food now, because um, I went so long without it, but I, I still am very light, and I continue to be light. So while I continue to stay light, I don't want to run the risk of getting sick. I don't want to get so, so thin that I actually can't make any power while I ride a bike. So over and above that, it's also a five hour day, it's an excuse to eat a lot. Because of the graft in my neck and the blood flow and all of that, I've got to take these little bad boys every day for the rest of my life, essentially. I mean, it makes the blood thinner, which is good. Gets more blood flowing. But um, I've got a reason for it. So it's not just I'm not doing it for fun. But on the topic of nutrition, the nutrition for the ride, and I use Pure. See, the other day I rode the gorgeous loop, which you might get to see later on in the week. Well, from where I am now, it's 180k, but anyway, I did that on just water and I blew to shit. <laughs> I hit the wall pretty hard and the next day, ironically enough, Pure contacted me. And so they sent me some products to test out and I'm pretty happy with it. Touch wood. It's not wood, but I'm touching it. Uh, I haven't blown yet. So, we'll see this 30 hour week, we've got a lot of time to find out if I'm alive or not. <laughs> so I'm hoping I don't. Yeah, say hi to the camera, Dad. Yeah, funny guy. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I should probably give everyone the rundown to today. We're riding out to Dyer's Pass. Mm-hmm. And once we get to Dyer's Pass, we can go up Dyer's Pass along the top of the summit road, which is the top of the mountain, or the hill. We can go all the way to the end, to Godly Head. Then we're going to come back down another descent called Evans Pass into Summit, where we're going to meet Richard Lawson, who you'll see later, if he wakes up after doing it. Because he's watching Liège Best on Liège, and it was live the whole night, so he only went to bed at like 5 in the morning or whatever. And then we're going to go back up this mountain, mountain called Mount Pleasant. And that goes along Summit Road, which we came on. We're going to go down Dyes, but the other side of Dyes, into the bay, along the bay, up another hill called Gibby's Pass, down that hill, along the flats back here. This is a massive loop. And because it's going to be an interesting sort of experience, something new, I think it's a way to document my, my journey, my riding, and how I've come to sort of the stage of riding 30 hours. I'm going to be putting all my rides into Strava, so I'll be naming it Tour to Come Back Stage 1, or Day 1. You can actually see where in the world I've ridden, so you can keep track on that. So um, if you don't follow me, you can follow me on Strava at Keegan Girdlestone. Yeah, and I don't know how I've been roped into this, but it's happening, so... Oh yeah, I should probably mention that Ian is going to man up and do the whole 30 hours with me. We're going to impress the coach holding the camera. <laughs> hey, coach. Helmets always, kids. Alright.
See you later. Not safe. We'll see you boys just now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Need to wash it. Cheers, cheers. I'm kind of disappointed there's so much cloud because there's actually a stunning view of the ocean down there and down there. But we are here, there's proof of that. So we're going to head down to the coffee shop now and we're going to meet up with Richard. He's unfortunately pretty cooked so he's just going to come out for coffee and we'll have a little talk to him then but then uh, yeah we'll just carry on with the ride. It's going to be a two-man show today. Oh, look at us, team Oakley. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Straight to the side of Hi. Is that just my nose or have you got the whole face in there? <laughs> to anyone that doesn't actually know, Richard came to visit me in Italy in hospital. What happened, Richard? Enlighten my, my the, the people. We've all, heard, we've all heard the stories. Have we? I don't think Ian has. Yeah. What I'm happened? sure Ian heard the stories. Here's the coffee. So, back to me in Italy. <laughs> okay, no, but they're all dead serious now. When you saw me in Italy... Dead serious. Yeah, oh, no. Again, bad, bad choice. Man. It's my bad. Okay, seriously though. Because you were there from the beginning and you saw how I was in that state. How, um... Did you ever think I'd ever be able to ride a bike again? To be honest, definitely not. No. It was pretty, pretty crazy um, going and, and walking in and seeing you like that, bro. It was, yeah, something I'll never forget, that's for sure. Yeah, I believe, uh, I've done, I don't remember this at all, but apparently you fainted. I like to call it passing out. <laughs> a few Do things. Like low, low blood sugar. And, uh, <laughs> Just a lot of big, big week, big training week. Yeah. Well, it was actually. It was quite a big week. <laughs> so, you're, you're no stranger to doing big weeks yourself. You've done a 39 hour week before. Yeah. What, a few what do you think of me doing a 30 hour week? Um, so, like. I think you need to harden up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> not even 11 weeks, not, not even 11 months after my accident. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah. It's a good, good starting point, that's for sure. So, it'll be interesting to see how you feel at the end of it. Well, we're only two hours in. <laughs> First coffee shop. It's 28 hours to go. And seven, six days to go after this. But, um, so you, are you going to join us for any more of the days? Yeah, definitely try and come out for a few of them. Um, for me, I need to try and stop doing such long miles. So, yeah, I'll be there or thereabouts and give you a push every now and then. Was that or maybe you'll be pushing me. Yeah, you'll, you'll be pushing me, man. Thanks for that.
What was that? Yeah, it was a good one. So that was a cheeky uh, 5 hours and 1 minute, 136 kilometers. Recovery is important and I feel like I'll need it more than than ever because I feel like since my accident I've actually been fatiguing quite a bit more um, and I think it's partially because of the brain damage I think it's because my brain's working over time just trying to process everything and because I've got 30% less of the right side of my brain so I've got less coordination on my left side of my body well my brain's not working it's not functioning as as it should and it's having to sort of re reroute, reroute and kind of process itself differently and do the same thing but it's trying to figure it out a completely different way and I think that's taking, well I know that's, that's taking more time and that's why it was so hard for me at the start to actually do anything because I fatigue so quickly but um, so I think for me at the moment I'm fatiguing a lot quicker um, but I also think I need to to take more initiative in my um, recovery and so I think it's important that I eat well I drink well and I sleep well I don't do the sleeping well that well but I need to work on that so hopefully in the next sort of coming days the fatigue will help me sleep a bit better I'll see you doing a bit of stretching there young man how are the legs feeling today? yeah today they were pretty they're actually pretty good um, towards the end though they are uh, they just start to get quite a bit heavier. Oh uh, yeah. Compressions. I see you've got your compressions on. Yeah. I mean, I was when I got off the bike, I was, I was contemplating, do I go commando and let it breathe, <laughs> or do I, <laughs> or do I put on the compressions, and think about tomorrow's ride? <laughs> so you, sorry. The poor bastard's going through a lot. Oh uh, yeah. I'm not feeling too bad, but I'm feeling very lethargic and tired, so we'll see how today goes. You're rocking some uh, new kit there, Keegan. Yeah, pure. Thought I'd test out the new jacket. It's not going to rain, but it's warm, so <laughs> may as well use it. See you on the other side. Okay. I'll see if you in. Yeah. Okay, boys.
Hello, girls. Hello. How was that? That hurt. Did that hurt? Yeah. So it took me about two hours for my legs to actually wake up. I'm very tired. Okay. I've been going up lots of climbs. You survived? Barely. Okay, good stuff. Got six, five more days of this shit to go. Jeez, like. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep for like a year after this. Okay. See, I've got your happy face on. Yeah, so last night was kind of a disaster. I was just super restless and I couldn't sleep at all. Mike, she spoke to me and Richard about it. Because I know he's done heaps of K's before. And I got into bed and I just couldn't sleep. And I was like, oh my gosh. So eventually I fell asleep just before quarter to 12 or about 12 o'clock. I asked Richard, is it normal when when you do big cakes, sometimes just get super restless when you get to bed. And he said, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a 50-50 sort of thing. You can't just get to bed and you either fall asleep straight away or you just can't sleep at all. So that sucks. Especially because I was thinking, shit, it's a long bloody week and I'm only on day two. I'm pretty tired of it. Sheesh. So I'm lucky today is only a four hours. Easy, easy. Day with some sprints. I guess today will be the character building day. A good coffee stop will be doing me justice. Do you want to be in the shower? Yeah. Shall I zoom in on that? Yeah, yeah. Just the zoom in on the nose again, yeah. like. Okay, so Mikhail. How long have you been riding for? Two or three years. Two or three years. What's the longest ride you've ever done? 125 k's, I think. 125 k's for a 13-year-old ain't bad. <laughs> so well, what are your aspirations in cycling? Get really fit. Win national titles. Hopefully Olympics. Olympics. From national titles to Olympics, I like that. Um, and I believe you've joined the um, more Stevens Markham's development team, junior development yeah. team. Yeah. You're by far the youngest rider on there. How does that feel? <laughs> good. She need to try to keep up with him. You're doing a pretty good job today. Cheers. I, was, uh, I, was, I wasn't hanging about and you were riding my wheel, so that's good. Are you gonna join this 30 hour week with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Stick for there. Actually, our legs feel pretty good, so why not go back into the hills? As I said in the beginning, I was feeling a bit tired, so we're just gonna do a flat ride. Nah, nah, that's too easy. We we want a challenge, so we're up in the hills again, and again this stupid freaking cloud. I swear, every single day we've been up here, it's been super foggy and cloudy, and you can't see the views, which kind of sucks because I really, really wanted to be able to show off Christchurch and the beautiful training grounds to, to all the foreigners that don't live here or don't have never been here. But 
to our thought we'd give you an update. Um, I'm feeling pretty good, despite the lack of sleep or the struggle of sleep. And so we're going to go down the bus now, which is probably the most gnarly descent in Christchurch. So that'll be fun. We're just doing a camera swap to Richard, because Richard's probably the best descent out of all of us. So he'll be in the front for that, and hopefully bring you guys the best footage possible. How's the, the legs today? Mine? Yeah. Yeah, still uh, need a bit of work. Haven't quite warmed up yet. Yeah. We're we'll good in two or three days. That's not good news for me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but the guys are going good. Guys? Well, young fellas. Yeah, you, me and Ian. Yeah. Mikhail today, smashing us up the climbs. Yeah, we'll do dropped us. <laughs> Damn. Future hitter. Great coffee made by Wayno. Hashtag VTC. Not just a good coach, but a good coffee maker. Mm. Well, I'm out for the coffee, that's for sure. <laughs> so what's on the menu for tomorrow? Gorgeous, bro. With you guys on TT right? TT bikes, eh? 180 is a long day, yeah, from here. A long day on a TT bike, 180k. <laughs> <laughs> we need new goods after that. Yeah. Coffee number two for me, coffee number three for me, we are Richard. Yeah. So, we are in Oxford now at a quaint little coffee shop. Um, so we are on TT Bikes, myself, Ian, and myself. <laughs> it's been a pretty rough day for me, personally. Uh, Richard's on a road bike, and he's just been stomping it, averaging 260 watts, just casually, on day four. Yep, so, Richard, how are you feeling? You've got the experience of of riding a few big days in a row. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Feeling all right. Same as day one. Only three days to go. What about you, Ian? Legs feel tired, but we'll just see. Hopefully, they just keep going and going, and don't complain anymore. But that's the aim. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be painful. No pain, no gain. <laughs> <laughs> coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of virtual training centre, owner and head coach. You've been coaching me all my life and you've coached a few world tour riders and a few other professionals um, and some that could have made it but never did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, how do you think I'm going so far? You've had to look at some of the numbers and some of the data. Um, this is going to be my biggest week so far, so what do you think? Am I on track? It'll be, I think you're on track to blow, yes, but um, <laughs> it'll be interesting because you haven't done it before your accident, so how you respond after the accident, I'm not too sure. Um, you know, I think it's a, ca a case of let's see what happens, you know, obviously listening to your body.
today. So today was a big day. <clears throat> Five and a half hours on the dot. The biggest day potentially of the week. I'm not sure how many hours I'll do on Saturday. So we have the halfway point. I'm at 19 hours and 40 minutes or something. 565.3 k's and 6,902 meters of climbing. So it's been a pretty big four day block. And today was on the time trial bike too, which uh, is why I'm not wearing skins today. I thought I'd let it breathe. <laughs> today I'm <was laughs> sacrificing. I'm sacrificing good legs for tomorrow <laughs> by ensuring that it breathes a bit. Because I've, I've found that it's hard to do the hours when it's uncomfortable to sit down. <laughs> but shit, today was a big day. Not only was it a big day, it wasn't just riding, I still had efforts to do. No, I did um. 250 for the first 20 minutes and then the second 20 minutes is 306. That's the one. Yeah. I was going to say I did two times 20 minute efforts. Yeah. I was meant to do three, but I thought, nah, stop it. <laughs> but after the second, because I'm doing it, it's not just efforts at dog, oh, go hard. It was kind of also a strength interval, so we're pretty tired. I haven't never done a four day block this big before. I, I haven't told anyone yet, so it's been four days now. So I'm only telling you now because you had to watch this far to see it. <laughs> but so my the extent of my injuries and what actually happened and why I'm still riding my bike is because I severed my carotid artery and my jugular vein. And if you don't know what those are, those are probably the two main veins in the um, neck. The one take the carotid artery takes the heart, the blood from the heart to the head, to the, the brain. brain. Yeah. And then the jugular takes the blood from the brain to back to the heart. And I cut both of the bastards. <laughs> Well, that is why it's a miracle I'm still here. The doctor said, um, well, I lost essentially my whole entire blood supply of blood. Um, I bled out completely. I went two hours, 17 minutes without mm. oxygen to the brain. And in that time, I suffered several strokes. The yeah, brain's yeah. dead. I mean, well, not all of it, but... Not, it, not your entire brain, <laughs> although sometimes I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so <coughs> to clarify, a lot, of, a lot of articles have said this bruising to the brain. Mm. That's incorrect. Because at least when the brain's bruised, it can actually heal itself. Whereas for where my brain is at at the point is that 30% of it started to die and 30% of it is dead, which means that that's it's never gonna work. That's part of the brain is gone forever. And what so essentially the the the, the um, side effect of the brain damage is the left side of my body is significantly um, less coordinated. In the beginning it was a lot weaker. Um, so I was walking in circles when I started. <laughs> now, that's a lie, but uh, yeah. Um, so I struggled a lot with coordination. I still do. It's a big problem for me at the moment. I um, <clears throat> It takes a lot to focus on moving each individual finger um, and the, I, the only hindrance it really has for me when I'm on a bike is I can pull the brakes fine um, But when I get food out of my back pocket <laughs> or try and put something in it once it gets into the back pocket, I struggle to move it, <laughs> and I can't get anything out of my pocket. But I, I'm actually getting better. Mm. I mean, I'm having a bit better control because once I grab something, if I put it into a small space, it's uh, I struggle to let go of certain parts. So I've got a bit of struggle with the control. So this arm, hello, it's paralysed. Well, partially. I don't know if you can see. There used to be a massive hole there. I don't know if there's still another big hole, but yeah, it might, it's still a hole there. It's my yeah, so my rotator cuff kind of um, doesn't work anymore. The bicep, the muscle. So, well, it has started waking up because I can start to get that range of move movement back, but initial stages it couldn't move and neither could my deltoid. So initially I was, I remember lying in hospital and my workout was to touch the wall next to me and I stood about not even a meter away from the wall and I couldn't touch the wall. Um, so that was about that movement. And now I can lift my arm over my head, just about. Kind of give us a flex, show, show us how your bicep's coming in. You were telling me earlier that you and Richard had a bonding moment today. Oh yeah, when I was in hospital, um, Richard came to visit. In Rimini. In Rimini. And, and fainted like a fairy. And I, <laughs> and I, we had the discussion, but he wouldn't, um, he wouldn't say he was a bit shy about it. But, but in, um, in the hospital, I remember telling myself that if I could ever ride a bike again, I was going to do massive Ks with him because he's done, he does it anyway. He, he's, he's really, um, he just loves riding his bike because he loves riding his bike. And I like that and that's why I love riding a bike. So that is why I still ride my bike because I love it. It brings me a lot of happiness. I, prom I promised myself that if I got back on the bike, I would do big weeks with him. I never told him that, but 
in hospital, I told my dad that today or this week we're doing it. So I think it's pretty special. And, and he's been a big motivation to me. He just rides for the love of it. That's sort of why I'm actually still riding. Because some people are like, dude, why are you riding? It nearly killed you. But my sort of mentality is that I could die doing so many different things. Um, but if I died riding my bike, at least I knew I died doing my, the thing that I love the most. I'm at at the moment. Uh, my goals and ambitions are still the same. Um, I haven't changed. My mindset is still to win the Tour de France one day, win Olympics and World Championships. I've set myself a short-term goal of competing in the Commonwealth Games next year. So I'm hoping to get on the long list for South Africa in the next coming weeks or months or whatever. I guess that's why I'm doing this Monster Week. I want to prove to myself and everyone else that I've still got that ability to go the distance. I think I'm on the right track at the moment. Um, but one thing I've learned is that when I've put my mind to something, I can do it. I'm hoping that I can show sponsors that are backing me as well. My Oakley, Northwave, Psycho Socks, Pure Sports Nutrition, um, and Trek Factory, um, Trek Bikes, <laughs> Trek Factory Racing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, to the sponsors that are believe in me, uh, Indy Cars for sorting me out with my first ever car, which is pretty cool. I'm willing to put in the hard work to get back to where I was, and for anyone that's backing me, um, I give my 100%. Well, there's two legends, um, and first, the first legend is Scotty Browns. He has helped me out unbelievably. When I first got to New Zealand, no one would help me out. He helped me out then. He's continued to help me and support me. And even when I crashed, Scotty was the first person to help me out. So Scotty's an absolute legend. Um, he, he loves me like his own son. He, he refers to me as his son. So it's pretty special. Um, and Scotty, thank you for all your help. You, you mean the world to me, man. And that leads me to, to my last, um, one of my last sponsors. No, not sponsor, but someone who's helped me out a lot. And that is Robbie Hunter from ProTouch Global. He is my rider agent, but he's also been a mentor to me. To be able to get back on the bike, prove to myself, I've always been the kind of person to take the positive out of the negatives. I want to be able to be a symbol to people, no matter what happens, no matter how bad the setback is. With the right frame of mind, with the right people backing you, you can you can get back to whatever it is you believe you want to get back to. I was pronounced dead. It hasn't even been 11 months yet since the accident, and I'm here doing my biggest training week ever. I guess this documentary that I'm or vlogmentary that I'm filming is also um, something that you can watch and just get inspired by. I'd like to inspire as many people as I can. Try and change someone's life, one, one, one person's life every day. If you're doubting me, you're on the wrong side. <whistles> 61.7, I've lost about a kilo over nine, or oh, since yesterday. I'm pretty tired, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've got about eight and a half hours sleep, which is okay, but I could have used about 30. It's beside the point. I can tell you now, I can't wait to have coffee at the coffee shop. Let's do this. Day five. Today was the first recovery day. It wasn't a bad day. I mean, we rode out to the coffee shop and nothing exciting is really going to happen. I'm, I'm actually feeling not too bad. I'm a bit tired, but the legs don't feel too bad. So tomorrow, we're going to head out to Akaro and back. I'm going to be doing um, a five minute effort. I'm going to try and do my new peak effort. If I do six watts per kilo for five minutes, I'm going to be doing a race. It's a pretty big race. Secondly, now I know this is tour to come back. It's one week of 30 hours, but I have been training a lot prior to this. I've actually turned this into a three week training block. So next week will be a recovery week. Thank goodness. So two weeks, so two weeks ago I did about a 19 hour week. Then the week prior I did 17 and a half hours, but that was in five days because I wanted Sunday off before the big week. It's It's been a build up. It's not like I've just been been plonking along and then so I've actually kind of got like three weeks of fatigue in the legs I haven't exactly started with fresh legs so yeah I'll see you guys tomorrow and hopefully six watts per kilo for five minutes nice
How's that big boy? Oh mate, same bit of days. Solid 150k, so can't complain, can we? How was the ride joining us? Always nice to get out, but it's a wee bit difficult. How'd we go? A bit too fast for my liking. Yeah. So you knew me before my accident? Sure did, yeah. What did you think when you heard about my accident? A bit of tears, not gonna lie. Do you ever think I'd ride a bike again? I knew if anyone was doing it, it was gonna be you. How's it like riding with me now? Embarrassing, <laughs> knowing that this kid was dead less than a year ago. No, is that the woman whipping us all? Well, I wouldn't say that, but... Oh, get in there, whipping me at least. Oh, that's all good, bro. Cheers for coming along. No worries, big guy. I'm honestly feeling really, really good. I think today I felt the best out of the whole entire week, which is a good sign considering it's 27 hours deep into the week. But yeah, so um, I know I told you yesterday I would do an effort today. I did that, but knowing my luck, the power meter battery died. That, that, that's my sort of luck. But I did it anyway. Um, Ian rode next to me because we were identical weight. Um, I was there or thereabouts. Because of that reason, I am going to do the race. Um, the flights have already been booked. I've got my license to race, so I'm going to be going over to Australia. I'm going to be racing Grafton to Inveral. It's an NRS race. 230 k's, 3,300 meters of climbing. <laughs> yeah, the winning time last year was six hours. I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I found that the impossible can only happen if you believe it. And I feel like this week has just proved that. This 30 hours, it was a breeze compared to what I thought it, was, thought it would be. So the whole like week prior, I was trying to psych myself up for it because I couldn't understand the logic of riding on average four hours, for four hours, 20 minutes every day. And so I started to overthink and overanalyze. Now that I'm doing it, it's actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. Because of that reason, I've been pushing myself this whole week. And not really the whole week, since since the day the accident happened. I've, I've had to push the limits, not only of my own capabilities, but I can almost say of human capabilities, because I can't fathom how I'm still here. I'm grateful every single day that I get the opportunity to get out on the bike and ride. This week's been awesome. Got to do it with a good group of mates. It's just been another eye-opener for me that, that anything is possible when you have the right mind it and you've got the right people around you to do it and I just like to take this moment to, um, to say thank you to all of you who supported me and to all the sponsors that, that have backed me personally I've had not much help the only support I've had is from my family really and to my friends and all of you out there that have sent me messages said Keegan keep fighting and when you share your stories with me that really that really I love reading the messages like that if you put your mind to something you can do it and I'd like to reiterate that because every single guy I've set my mind to since the accident I have achieved and I think that, that that's a big credit to the, the mind and the people that have motivated me tomorrow is my birthday I turned 20 which is amazing because I never thought I'd at one stage I never thought I'd ever get to live to the age of 20 not too bad how are you feeling this morning really really tired last night was probably my worst night's sleep in the whole week going to be like 40k an hour southerly so <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's gonna be cold, but I'd rather be overdressed and underdressed. And on a bright note, I'm 20 today. Can you believe it? Up there, there's two of these little buggers. Yep. Good morning, lads. Good morning. Are we on the vlog? You are indeed. Oh, what a treat. Uh, and how are you this morning? I'm feeling tired. You too? Yep. That's right, I've. I've got 78 k's in my legs this week as opposed to 800 <laughs> so I might be able to hang on Right, so what's the plan this morning girls? Right before the rain begins Ah, oh, shit, no, okay, so we just got 2 hours 55 to do so we'll do 3 hours because we have a achieve here We like to over excel <laughs> Even if it's 5 minutes Pretty much the whole part's over, so even if it rains I don't really care I've got my North Bay booties on, they do the job. I've got my open leg warmers on. So, and I've got my Pure Rain jacket, so we're sorted. Did you notice that self-plugging? Do you do all your naming in the vlog because you're sponsored? Like, because of that? Yeah. Gotta, yeah. gotta say thank you to yeah. Sponsor. That's so gotta cool. You, you gotta realise that, you know, uh, your name is your brand. Yeah. Whatever you're wearing, somebody's paying for that, so you want to plug so them. Cool. So thanks, guys. <laughs> wait, wait. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perhaps that is taking it to the, <laughs> the next level. Exactly. Yeah. Yo! <laughs>
This should be a long day. <laughs> So today marks a pretty sad day in the world of cycling. Chad Young passed away today. It's pretty sad. So today I woke up feeling pretty lucky. That could have been me in that situation. I'm lucky enough to be here. And so today's ride, I, we're paying tribute to Chad and his family. We're going to celebrate his life by riding a bike. So we've got one hour to go. And we'll get 30 hours for the week. It's my birthday, so I'm, I'm, I'm celebrating life. I guess today is day to celebrate life, so let's go. I feel my heart underneath my skin. I feel my heart beating. You make me feel like I'm alive again. Enthusiasm level. We're living. This is life. So that's the difference between three hours and three hours. <laughs> no, man, I agree, man. This is awesome. Okay, team, so that's that. That's that's a week, a 30-hour week. And, um, yeah, we did it. We did it. High five. There's no one half five. Okay, cool. That was a different experience. I'm pushing myself to the absolute limit. Um, I think I found a new limit, which is good. So I can always keep pushing at that and keep moving forward. Um, but I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's joined me, that's helped me this week. To everyone that's just supported me throughout this whole journey. I could not have done it without any of all of you just supporting me. I um, mean, I really do appreciate um, everyone in my life, um, all the things that I have, um, and all of you that send me messages. So um, thank you for watching. And just remember, go out there and live your life to the fullest because life is beautiful. Enjoy it. Cheers, guys.